Well, good evening, everybody, again. Sorry about the uh, interruption there. Something happened to our internet feed. And uh, so we're going to try this again. And uh, hopefully we won't have no more interruptions. So uh, thank you again for, uh, for being patient with us. Yay. Uh, we are trying our very best to uh, make this work. This is a new thing for us. So, yes. Uh, and we can see your comments now, so that's good. <clears throat> so hello. Hey, Seth. Um, Y'all, let us know you're there. Let us know you're there. Say hello to us. We want to... We want to get to say hi and to everybody that's there. This is uh, different for us. Hey, Kayla, oh, Pinye, Benny. This is going to be hey, very Pastor. hard for well, this. Pastor's going to, going to get distracted, so we're going to turn it off. There's too many squirrels going on here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. It's so good to see y'all on the, uh, see your names anyway. We're feeling the love. So many people. Thank y'all. Thank you for showing up. Issue with our internet, so we've got uh, kicked off, but hopefully that won't happen again. I think we're in the middle of our song. <clears throat> yes. Uh, How about when you start off this time, we'll start off with some prayer. Yes. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, we will not get disconnected again. Well, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. Lord, we know that these are very difficult times as far as trying to. God, get into the new routine of how things are done and operated. But Lord, we know that you are a faithful God. You've been here and faithful, God, through it all. Thank you, Jesus. And I ask you today, God, would you just allow this moment, God, where we decided to do something a little different tonight. And Lord, from our hearts to those, I, I just pray your spirit and power will to minister, God, across these yes. airways. Go into every home. Move into every heart. God, let there be, dear Lord Jesus, a, a peace, God, that has not been since the beginning of all this, begin to settle in every home, in every heart, in every life. We love you. We thank you, God, the Lord, that the church is continuing on with this gospel message. In Jesus' mighty name.
time is that we have to trust him more. There's moments and times in life to where that you're going to have to settle some things and that being that you got to settle trust in God. Trust is simply the definition of trust is firm belief in the in the truth and ability or strength of someone or something to place your confidence in to learn how to depend on and I love it because even in Google it gives you the definition of trust it literally says trust in God something that we have been speaking for over a year now is learning how to trust in God there's been many times and opportunities to where that we've had to use our trust Trust has been and trust has been an easy word that we are able to say when everything is going well. Uh, everything is going as planned. Uh, as long as the family's healthy, as long as everything is going okay, then the word trust is easy to say and be able to proclaim that we do trust. As long as the skies are blue and no clouds, no storms no issues that we're having to deal with, we can say we trust. But it's in the moment when we trust, uh, we begin to uh, have storms that rise. It's in those moments we really learn, are we really trusted in God or is our trust been placed into an action? Trust is something to where that every one of us has got to settle in, inside of every one of us. Because when we say we trust in God, then you have to prove that we trust in God. Sometimes that could be where the battle lies. If faith has to be an action, uh, then we also know that evidently then trust must also be placed in an action. For faith without works is dead. So I wonder if trust without works is also dead. We understand trust and faith that lies within a um, just a so much close together. But it's easy to say we have faith, but do we have trust? Mm -hmm. Trust brings you into a whole different level in a realm of faith. If faith has to have an action, then trust must also have a action in place as well. How can we say that we have faith if we never have play, if we're never placed in a situation that requires us to have faith to be activated? The same is true about trust. We can say we trust God, but when we placed into a situation to where we have to trust God, then our trust, amen, is brought, brought to a new level of challenge. We learn how to trust when we are placed into life challenging moments like we're facing today. Trusting, having faith, believing, holding on, uh, grabbing a hold of promises and trusting that those promises are truly yea and of amen. James 2 and 18, it says this, that also faith by itself, it does not have works, it's dead means there has to be actions put with the faith. But someone may say, you claim to have faith and I have good works. Show me your alleged faith with the works if you can. What it's saying, the writer saying, is it possible to say we have faith but not have works with the faith? Sometimes it's only through challenges and moments that causes us to have works to be placed with faith. And then he, be, he went on and said, and I will show you my faith by my works. That is what I do. You see, as Christians, as people who are the child of God, we have to learn that we operate on a different principle than the world. I don't have to have the proof to have trust. I don't have to have an antidote to have trust because the trust, faith, 
is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I know God is in the midst of, though I cannot see. I trust that we have been placed in the hands of a great and awesome yes. and faithful God. Amen. I understand that if I'm showing myself faithful to God, his faithfulness is going to be returned back to yes. us. I'm grateful that I serve a God that he thought enough of us that he would put it into words and say that he is faithful and he's just. I'm grateful, amen, that he is faithful. His faithfulness has produced works because when he came, he didn't just say he had faith. He proved his faith to us. Faith was working together with his works. We understand that Abraham was placed into a situation to where faith or trust was put into a whole different level when it came to Abraham. But Abraham, it talks about his, his uh, faith was working together with his works. And by his work, by his faith uh, was made perfect. You've got to learn that there are some things that can only be perfected is in the trial era of using things. This circumstance that we're facing today should bring us to a new level of trust, faith, hope, unshakable faith, unmovable trust. Yes. For the Bible says he is faithful to do what he has promised. I pray that the church would come to a new level of what total trust really is. Yes. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what next month holds. But I trust mm -hmm. in the one who holds my tomorrow. Right. Oh, how I love to trust in the Lord. Yes. Trust, amen, can never be true trust until the trust becomes challenged. Our trust, our hope, and our faith has been challenged and even shaken at moments and times. But can I tell you, he is faithful. Yes, he is. Trust in God. God is with us. Amen. Abraham believed God and was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Could this be the missing key that we are not, or maybe could this be the key of closer intimacy with God when we come in alignment with total trust or faith in God? Could it be that God would call us friends if we would get trust where it needs to be? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And uh, could it be that that trust in God is what God is trying to get the church to realize we need to trust in him? Verse 24, it said, You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. you got to understand something tonight. I, I want to make this clear. You have to have faith. Faith is the beginning of the road to salvation. Yes. Faith is what starts you on the journey to know Jesus Christ. Faith is the beginning, but it's not the completion because faith alone does not save us, but it's the works with faith. I want you, Jesus could have told his disciples, I want you to go to the upper room and there was going to be power that was going to be sent down from heaven's throne. Faith could have said, that's going to be awesome. But they had to put some works with the faith. And they had to make their journey to an upper room and linger there, tarry there, yes. isolate themselves there for 10 days. Yes. And then the works that was placed in the faith, it brought back a supernatural encounter. Amen. I wonder today, because we understand that works, faith alone does not save us, but it's the faith. It's, it's, it's the works that I put with it. What is it that God's wanting you to trust him with? 
What is it that God is saying, just trust me as I lead you closer and further with me? You have faith, but has your faith been put, has there been uh, works put with faith? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Could it be that this is the moment where faith is going to rise to a child of God, a, one, a, a person who believes and fears in the promises of God? Could it be that through this circumstance across our world that something is going to be placed with faith? There's more people praying right now than ever has. They got faith that God is hearing them. Right. But they, they're now coming out of their homes and they put works with their faith. And I believe God will hear us from heaven when we put our works with our faith. Therefore, John followers had to be baptized and be filled with the Holy Ghost because of the Spirit, because it wasn't just the Spirit or it wasn't just a faith. It had to be something in man, the vessel. It had to be the spirit. And that's why John the Baptist, or John's followers, excuse me, that was, uh, had to be uh, rebaptized. Because the question was, have you received since you believe? You've got the faith, but have there's something else been giving since you have discovered the belief or trust or even faith? Have you received? since you believe. Faith alone cannot save us. You have to, it is what faith and trust produces is what saves us. Yes. It's what comes out of relationship of trust and faith with God. And because of that, we understand that it was those followers of John, as they begin to lay their hands on them, they begin to be filled with the Spirit, what the Scripture just said, you got to have the Spirit in you. And because of that, we understand that when you do that, Jesus becomes the center of everything of your life. Trust in God brings you to a whole different level, to a place where you come unshakable. And as Paul said, and none of these things move me. That's what trust and faith will do. And if you'll do that, this next song will make a lot of sense to you.
something that just settles and calms everything. Thank you, Jesus. When Jesus is at the center of it all. Could it be that that's why God said, they that know their God shall do great exploits? It's because God's in his rightful place. It's because God is living, residing in the very place that he created from the creation. God created a voided place. I firmly believe in the heart of every man that only Christ can dwell. And when Christ is there, something so beautiful becomes out of that relationship with Christ in his rightful place, which is in the center. How, how the question might be, how, how can I get Jesus in the center of my life? Or what does that mean to have Jesus in the center of my life? In Matthew chapter 6 and 33, it says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. You see, when Jesus is in the center, everything else that's needed revolves around him. My health, when Jesus is where he is, my health will be what it needs to be. When Jesus is in the center, he knows where to put the finances. He knows how to put the family. He knows how to put the past, present, and future where it needs to be when Jesus is in the center. The best way I can describe to it, if a bicycle has a center hub, and it's that center hub, it rolls around the axle and all of those spokes are connected to that center hub. If anything comes detached Thank from you. the center hub, then things just don't operate like it should. You gotta get Jesus back in the center. That's what this has been about, is getting Jesus back yes. to the place that he belongs. That's why I said the other day, I don't never want to go back. Because I found a place in Jesus. Hallelujah. Or let me rephrase that. I've allowed Jesus to find a place in me where he's become my everything. I understand that it's just not my past that he's interested in. He's interested in my present moment and he's in, interested in my future. And all things work to the good, to those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. Those who have Christ in the center Amen. of their lives. I don't want God to have a secondary place in my life. I want him to have the primary place in my life. Matthew 22 and verse 37 and 40. Here's another way that you can have Jesus in the center of your life. How, how do you know Jesus is in the center? It's really simple. Because if you can live out Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 and 40, It'll help you identify where Jesus is. Jesus said it to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. You want Jesus in your life? It's the first commandment. Put in him in every place. Hmm. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Get Jesus in the center and everything else will fall right in the very place Amen. it needs to be. Amen. Not worried about what's happening in our world to the point to where it shakes me. 
to where that Jesus moves from the center. But I'm keeping Jesus in the very center. Jesus is like a gyro. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a, it's a mechanism that spins so fast that even when something gets off balance, it'll bring it back into center. That's what Jesus is. He's a gyro. He brings it back. Maybe that's why he's called Jehovah Jireh. God will bring everything back into, so, into focus. Even the Old Testament. You see, God wanted to make sure we understood the Old Testament and the New Testament. It was very important. In Deuteronomy 6 and 5, here's what it says. Deuteronomy 6 and 5. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. But then he went a little bit further in chapter 10, verse 12, and here's what he said. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, and walk in all of his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God, with all of our heart and with all of our soul. That's how you get Jesus in the center of it all. Jesus is the navigator that leads us into the destiny that he's already prepared for you and I. And when we do that, then we can, walk, then we can sing this song.
You see, when you call on the name of Jesus, you're not just calling any old name. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but when you call on that name, that name that's been given all power and all authority. Thank you, Jesus. When you call on his name, he is instantly yes. there. For he said, I'm as close as the mentioning of my name. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. When you speak that name, even the devils in hell begin to tremble. Even Corona 19 has to stand at attention at that name. All I got to do is remember there's a name yes. that I can call on in a time of trouble. And if God has all power that's been given to a name by the name of Jesus Christ, then that means that every other name and every other thing is a second than power. That's right. Everything yields to the authority. For even the disciples realize in the midst of a storm, <laughs> what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey his voice? Whoo! That's why you got to get Jesus in the center. Because he brings everything back to a peaceful place. When you call on his name, he is instantly there. Acts 2 and 38 helps us to understand the importance of that wonderful name. For even in the name of Jesus are we baptized, taking on that wonderful name. When you call on Jesus, the healer shows up. When you call on Jesus, the deliverer shows up. <laughs> when you call on the name of Jesus, your protector walks into the room. When you call on the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower, it gives you a place to find rest and safety. That's why you got to learn how to call on the name of Jesus. Before I call anybody else's name, I call on Jesus. Jesus should not be your last resort. It ought to be the first resort. It ought to be the first name you call when your eyes open in the morning. It should be the last name you speak before you close your eyes to sleep. Oh, can I tell you, there's something about the name of Jesus. Let's sing it one more time. Or let's sing a different one. That's what I mean. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. And he's just the same.
that name. He's my master. He's my savior. Yes, you are. He's my Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. of all the chaos. I love you. Because he I love you. Loved me. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm very grateful. <clears throat> that God so loved the world that he gave. And he gave his love before he even knew that we would love him back. I'm thankful that God saw something in me and in you 
that it was worth dying on the cross and showing his love. God exemplified his love for us. I wonder what is our love being shown to him. In these very uncertain, uncertain times, there's one thing that is certain. And Jesus made that promise with that certainty, and that is, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. If there's anything I can leave you with tonight is this. That's worth loving. That's worth making the center of your life. That's worth calling on the name of Jesus. That's worth trusting in Jesus. You cannot find anywhere in Scripture where he ever let anybody down can't find a scripture where he'll ever let a generation perish. They that trusted in their God, he always saw them through. A Red Sea couldn't stop it. Forty years in the wilderness couldn't stop it. Four hundred years of bondage couldn't stop it. Call on the name of Jesus. And I promise you, he'll talk back. You got another one, Mom?
couple of names scrolling through there tonight. And I pray that virtue flow over these airways into your home. My dear, precious friend, Norma, it's good to see you, praying for you, believing God's miracle power to restore, replenish, and renew every portion of you today. It's great to see all of you here today and watching some of the names that has been scrolling up. It is our prayer that the peace of God let us surround you and your family. If you're going to call on a name, call on the name that's higher. Paul said, I call on the name that's higher than I. I look into the hills from which cometh my help, but my help cometh from the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. I promise you, you'll never be disappointed. Let him take you in a place where you've never been before. God bless you, and God keep you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We love you. We love you so much.